the entrepreneurs here uh, on the LEAF program are looking at how they can use exponential technologies to really change the world, to, to disrupt the current systems. And because the, the solutions they're proposing are so new and disruptive, it means they often fall outside the traditional mainstream support systems. And so we, we were thinking, sort of, what's the what's then the call to action? How do we go? How do we go further from here? So uh, I applied to the, the lead program because I thought that this would be a fantastic chance to interact with um, a really diverse group of people from all over the Baltic Sea region. Um, I think the, the the initial application process uh, and looking at uh, how my sort of current understanding of sustainability could be further enhanced. Uh, you know, the, the new area that resilience maybe match with some of my uh, my older older experiences when we opened the call for this program we had over 200 applications from eight different countries from these 200 applications we had to select only 20 applicants and i think this is a real proof that there is a desire and a wish to challenge oneself and solve these problems that we're facing these 20 talents that joined the LEAD program were working throughout three months in three different modules. We met for the first time in the Stockholm Resilience Center and there we were really exploring the concepts of resilience thinking. So we are truly at a new juncture. And this is a juncture that can be described in summary in a very short, simple story. Up until sometimes in the late 1980s, so all the way up until just 25 years back, we could actually say that we were a relatively small world on a relatively large planet. It actually... um, so I would argue there are two main reasons why it's important for leaders to understand resilience and exponential technologies. The first, with regards to resilience, is the scientific evidence that we've reached a point where we no longer can exclude very abrupt, often negative changes occurring in the biosphere from ecosystems, oceans, rainforests, ice sheets that can affect and undermine our possibility of human development in the future. And therefore we need to build resilient societies, resilient food systems, resilient cities in order to navigate that future. I, I've been always thinking about uh, how I can have a smaller carbon footprint, how can I live greener? But for me, I, I knew that it's always um, hard to fully finalize that. What I was after was um, having a bit more clever ways of approaching it, and this was really spot on. And uh, I really want to understand more how I can contribute with my work and with my, with my energy to, uh, to uh, uh, to, for the benefit of the uh, planet. And we met once again for the second module in Tallinn, which was quite focused on exponential technologies. So at this moment, the two worlds from resilience thinking and exponential technologies were really coming together. Systems. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting example of how we can use our minds to really start to understand some of these fundamental ideas. LEAD is designed to really examine the nature of these exponential technologies and understand them in the context of innovations and, and how they can be applied for increasing resilience of social ecological systems. And I think that a key to this process is to consider these technologies in the context of systems, to really encourage systems thinking. And so the degree to which or we can encourage innovators and entrepreneurs and technologists to understand the principles underlying uh, living systems and the degree to which we can have ecologists and scientists really understanding the potential of technology I think is a really important leverage point within a program like this. Understanding how the data can be used to provide context is so important right now. I mean, I think that's what I hear you saying. Moonshots being in the hands of individuals, moonshots being in the hands of small groups organizing together, this is what exponentials have, have made possible. So, Exponential technologies are an amazing tool for the 21st century. 
What they give people here, what they give individuals all around the world is the ability to create tools, to design tools, to use data, to meet up with other people at a scale which only was available to governments and large organizations even 20 years ago. That ability to look around the world, to look at science and technology and find tools and say we can use them, a small team of people can use them, a team of people who are not scientists can join with scientists because of exponential technologies which let them connect, which let them do data analysis, which let them use sensors to find out new information about the world around them. So this is the way that exponential technologies are really going to make a difference because they are going to empower 7 billion people to have the same type of tools that right now might only be in the hands of a million people or a thousand people or in some cases 10 people. That humanity can disrupt the Earth system. You know, just that sentence, humanity is able to disrupt the entire Earth system without having hesitations in terms of the levels of uncertainty in that statement is quite remarkable. We, we have truly become a force of change. In fact, in the late... We have so much evidence today that building resilient, sustainable practices through exponential technologies forms an opportunity. In fact, a vast opportunity of not only solving many of the rising global environmental risks, but also enabling humanity to continue prospering on Earth for many generations to come. So I chose this program because um, I wanted to work in the future with something that was future related, something that was important and meaningful. And for me, that was related with the environment and uh, how to create a better future with uh, considering all the tremendous problems that we are actually facing. I also felt the responsibility as an educated human being who was aware of these problems um, to not just sit around and do nothing or just continue on my corporate job, uh, which I valued very much, but there was also that sense of, of yeah, an obligation to, to do something more about it now that I, that I knew. I, I was also excited about meeting like-minded people who also felt and thought uh, the same way, I mean, who also had identified that they were concerned about these problems, that they wanted to work on them. We met again finally here for the third module in Stockholm and it was extremely exciting to see the presentations and the projects, the ideas that the participants came up with. Uh, the problem is that a lot of data is in very bad shape, the data is in silos, the communities are in silos. You can also choose uh, other options uh, if you are, are allergic to lactose then select lactose free. Great companies that are out there that are used to solve complex problems every day and are they really solving the right problems? For me, you know, to change ways, we need to change how we eat, or how we get that food, how we eat how we eat food. You can easily see when there are tornadoes approaching somewhere, or, or there will be flooding approaching, or anything. As a clean tech scientist, I'm always looking for opportunities to innovate in a broader context because not only are there market opportunities, but there's there's the chance to make connections that previously not might not be made. Lead is a great example of how you can do this. You bring together a variety of individuals in a context that's system-based, and then you are able to champion things like resilience and exponentials in a fashion that not only can the students bring this back to their own home countries, but they collectively can create innovations, ideally, that can emerge out of the LEAD program in a very productive way. Uh, the LBC region, and of course we want to promote Sweden, but not, not for the sake of Sweden. What we can learn from uh, these participants, which are the, the change makers that we invited here, the entrepreneurs, uh, it's a lot about how we communicate our science how we, and the research, so we get feedback on that, on, on how we sound, how we make sense of, of the research, especially then on the research on, on innovation and transformation in social ecological system.
So uh, the Swedish Institute believe that it is very important to work over the borders or uh, in a regional context uh, in, in the Baltic Sea region uh, to develop our region in the best way. Uh, we do believe that networking, learning from each other is the be best way to reach our goal. thing for me was again but on a grander scale getting this perspective from other people people from banking and fashion industry and UN and, and all kinds of different views on it and to to use their views and experiences and, and sort of trying to pair that together and, and build something together. We'll do a trial run first. So I think the the most uh, valuable part of the program is the people, both the other participants and the mentors and teachers coming in. Uh, bring in a lot of uh, ideas uh, now, but I also think I will have a lot of value in, in interacting with them in the future, definitely. Now we have uh, the great pleasure to listen to who are you? Hey. You're trying to solve these problems that are really, really, really complex. And um, in the past, we might not have had the technologies that allowed us to solve those complex problems. But right now, those technologies are actually being developed. So if, if that technology is developed and we're able to apply it to looking at environmental issues, environmental ecological systems, interacting with human and social systems, uh, it'll just be amazing. Uh, what we can do and what LEAD is doing, it's bringing together these incredible leaders from around the Baltic region and connecting them to the resources and, and the knowledge and, and learning about what new technologies are coming out and learning about what the problems are and empowering that group to start companies and organizations that will be able to um, really make our world a, a better place using the most cutting edge technologies that are coming out. Participants are really excited to push their project ideas, their businesses ideas out there. And I think very soon we will start having proofs, concrete examples coming from the LEAD program proving that it's possible to integrate these two worlds that seem so far apart.